Center, uh, Winnipeg Centre. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I just want to reiterate uh, the words of our leader earlier on today when he expressed how inspired we all are by the youth, the young people across this country rising, people from all walks of life who are rising, who are standing in support of human rights and for climate justice. And I also want to start out by acknowledging the uncertainty of the time we are faced with across the country. People worried about getting to work, VIA and CN workers worried about their jobs, people worried about getting supplies and products that they need to keep themselves safe. And our thoughts are with those workers as well. And my thoughts are also with those that are standing on the front lines of the blockade, blockade lines that I myself, as an Indigenous person in this place, have had to go to, to, to fight for my own basic human rights in this country. And I understand the reasons for it. They are defending what they know to be right. They are standing up saying clearly that we support human rights for all people. And they are hoping that this time, maybe this time, things might actually change. And it's a terrible crisis we are facing but it's a repetitive crisis. And unlike Prime Minister Trudeau indicated that it was a crisis of infa infrastructure disruptions, callously, it is not. It is a human rights crisis that is rooted in the wrongful dispossession of lands from Indigenous people. And it's a crisis being faced by people right across the country. Canadians are now looking for leadership from all of us, and they are looking for leadership from the Prime Minister. So far, what we've seen from the Prime Minister and this government is a huge, huge gap between what has been promised and what has been delivered. And this crisis didn't start overnight. It is rooted in the wrongful dispossession of lands from Indigenous peoples and the human rights violations, violent colonialism, which have become so normalized that Indigenous people are not afforded the minimum human rights standard that any person needs, Indigenous or not, to live a life of joy. Minimum, rights, minimum human rights standards contained in the Charter of the United Nations, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, International Human Rights Laws, and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. All declarations and laws Canada has agreed to follow, but often fail to do so in practice, a continuation. And these human rights violations have impacted my own family and nation. Residential schools, the 60s scoop, and the dispossession of our lands have left a lasting impact on our community that continues to impact us even today. Residential schools, disrupting our families. It was the forced incarceration of children for no other reason because of our ancestry, an ancestry of great leaders who taught values of respect, love, courage, humility, truth, wisdom, kindness, the seven sacred laws that guided a beautiful way of life. And this Prime Minister promised to do things differently. He made commitments to working towards a path to support reconciliation. But once again, Indigenous people throughout this country are left disappointed. 
and once again have been afforded nothing but broken promises that have resulted in many Indigenous peoples throughout this country being homeless on our own lands. Generations of promising one thing but doing another. Instead of learning lessons from the past, he's doubled down. He promised to be different. He promised to make change. He promised to take the genuine steps towards reconciliation. And he has a list of things that he's done. But let's look at what he and his government have done. He broke those promises. They have ignored the courts, ignored this place, and ignored their own promises, and have continued to drag First Nations kids to court to fight for their right to have equal access to programs and services, to have the same human rights as other children that live on these lands that we now call Canada. They have broken their commitment to close the funding gap for kids living on reserve to go to school, schools, children. And they have underfunded the program set up to help women reclaim their status or those seeking compensation for day schools. Despite promise after promise, they have dragged their feet on meeting their obligations to ensure clean drinking water is available in Indigenous peoples' communities across the country. Basic human rights. And this Prime Minister has done all of that while undermining and laughing at Indigenous peoples, including young water and land protector from Grassy Narrows who attended a fundraising event and raised the issue of clean drinking water. This is not a joke. We are not a joke. I have fasted on those blockade lines at Grassy Narrow, the beautiful lands that have been impacted by development. Once again, Grassy Narrows is being denied the human rights to a healthy environment, and this government is taking, it, taking its sweet time providing a treatment centre for those suffering from mercury poisoning. And in this House weeks ago, when the NDP called on him to accept an invitation to Wet'suwet'en by the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs, the Prime Minister laughed and said it wasn't his problem, quoting, entirely under provincial jurisdiction. I can say one thing. I'm glad that the Prime Minister is not calling on the police to be sent in. We've seen the consequences of that before. But how? How, just a couple of weeks ago, could he have been so blind to the reality on the ground, ignoring the voices of Indigenous peoples, of young people across this country? Just a couple of weeks ago, he could have been so blind. How could he be? It says so much about why and how we got to where we are right now. There is, a fun, there is fundamental misunderstanding, willful or not, about the facts of the situation we are currently faced with. Most Canadians have learned a history that ignored the real history of the violent colonialism upon which this place was built and continues, continues under our very own watch today. And I know the concept of rule of law has been used in this country to steal children away from their families, but we can't pick and choose to only use rule of law when it suits our economic interest. We must enforce the rule of law to ensure that all peoples in this country can be afforded human rights. And that includes the rights of Indigenous people to their Aboriginal rights and title. And we have a path forward. This was provided by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. But it's one thing to enact it, but we must respect it. We must respect minimum human rights standards. 
and we must use the rule of law not to punish, but to ensure a good quality of life for all peoples in this place we now call Canada. Thank you very much.